Okay, so in this video we're going to be looking at the graph of the truncus. So the curve produced by the rule y equals 1 on x squared is called a truncus. And we have a picture of the graph of y equals 1 on x squared, i.e. the most basic truncus, um, shown here. So again, you can have a think about plotting out some points when x equals 1, y equals 1 on 1 squared, which is still 1, so it goes through 1, 1. When x equals 2, y equals 1 on 2 squared, which is 1 on 4, so it goes through 2, 1 quarter. Okay, it goes through 1, 1. Um, when x equals 3, that would be 3, 1 ninth. Okay, 1 on 3 squared, 4, 1 sixteenth. So compared to the hyperbola, where it's just 1 on x, this graph gets close to the x-axis more quickly. The hyperbola would go through the point 2, 1 half and 3, 1 third and 4, 1 quarter and so it would sit higher up here. So this approaches the x-axis more quickly. But same idea, even if we're at you know, x equals 1 billion, the y value is 1 on 1 billion squared. It's tiny, but it's still not zero. So the graph is getting closer and closer and closer to the x-axis, but it's never actually going to reach it. So that x-axis is an asymptote. We see the same thing happening as we head out this way. When x equals a half, um, y will equal 1 on 1 half squared, which is 1 on 1 quarter, which is 1 divided by a quarter is 1 times 4, so that's 4. So we go through 1 half, 4. So again, the um, hyperbola would have gone through 1 half, 2, and 1 quarter, 4, and so it would have been, it would have been closer to the y-axis, whereas the truncus would be further away. So comparatively, the hyperbola would have been closer here, it would have also gone through 1, 1, but then it would have been higher up here. So if you were drawing them on the same axis, they're not exactly the same shape, okay? The other difference between the hyperbola and the truncus is obviously when we have a negative x value because we're squaring it, it will produce a positive y value. So when x is negative 1, we've got y on 1 over negative 1 squared. Negative 1 squared is 1, and so that's just 1. When x is negative 2, we've got 1 on negative 2 squared, which is 1 on positive 4, and so that's negative 2 1 quarter. Again, when x equals um, 1 half, we've got 1 on, sorry, negative 1 half, we've got 1 on 1 quarter, which is 4, so it goes through negative 1 half 4. So we've got this symmetry about the y-axis for the truncus because we're squaring. So when x equals negative 2, we get the same thing as if x were to equal positive 2. Okay, so that's our basic shape. We again have asymptotes at the y-axis and x-axis. Translations will move those asymptotes around, and if they move, we'll need to draw them in as straight dashed lines labelled with equations. So the graph of y equals 1 on x squared, this graph pictured up here, has asymptotes with equations x equals 0, which is the y-axis, and y equals 0, which is the x-axis. Okay, once again, we've already looked at the effects of transformations on both the graph and the equation. So we know that when we dilate by a factor of a from the x-axis, we do a times the function. If the function is 1 on x squared, that'll be a times 1 on x squared. And so that is going to be a on x squared. We multiply fractions, multiply numerators and denominators. Reflection in the x-axis, we multiply the whole function by negative 1. So that's going to be y equals negative 1 times 1 on x squared, which we can just write as negative 1 on x squared. Note that that's the same as negative 1 on x squared. They're the same thing. It's also, oh, sorry. It's also the same as 1 on negative x squared. Okay, Wherever you put the negative, it doesn't matter. They're all the same thing. That's true for the hyperbola as well. Negative 1 on x is the same as negative 1 over x, which is the same as 1 over negative x. They're all the same thing. Okay, if we translate to the left or right, I'm just going to get rid of those, but you know what I'm talking about. If we translate to the left or right, um, so in this case to the right by h units, we do f of x minus h. So we replace the x in the function with x minus h. Okay, so the function becomes y equals 1 over, instead of x squared, it's x minus h all squared. That's the translation to the right by h. The translation up by k, we just add the k on to after the function. So the function is 1 on x squared, and then it is that plus k. And then we can combine those together by looking at y equals a over x minus h all squared plus k, where a 
is um, the dilation from the x-axis by a factor of a. If it's negative, it's a reflection in the x-axis. The h is the translation left or right, and the k is the translation up or down. Let me just pause and flick across to a graphing screen to um, just have a play around with that before we sketch some truncuses ourselves. Truncuses or trunk I for... Okay, so here we are over here with our um, truncus. So I've got the most general form of the truncus, y equals a over x minus h all squared plus k. At the moment a is 1, h and k are both 0, so we're just looking at 1 on x squared. So there's our basic truncus. Asymptotes are at the x and y axes. Now if we were to make a bigger, it's going to dilate the graph away from the x-axis. So there a is 5. You can see the original truncus went through 1, 1. This dilated truncus goes through 1, 5. Similarly, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 5. So dilation. If a is a fraction, so if a is, oh, sorry, I've got to step off. So if a is less than 1, it'll get closer to the x-axis. Let me just change that step value again. Um, if a is 0, it, there is no truncus, it's just y equals 0, so that's um, trivial. But if a is negative, our graph will be reflected in the x-axis, so it's going to be upside down. So more like a sort of elephant trunk tra shape as opposed to a tree trunk sort of shape. Um, okay, so a is about dilation and reflection. h we know is about translating left or right. So at the moment h is 3, so this is the equation 1 on x minus 3 all squared x minus 3 all squared is the translation to the right by 3 and you see that vertical asymptote is also going to move obviously if h was something negative so here it is negative 6 so the equation we're looking at here is 1 on x minus minus 6 all squared so 1 on x plus 6 all squared and that has gone to the left by 6 if we go back to 0 and have a look at k k is about translating up or down if we make k bigger the graph translates up so we've got an asymptote there at y equals 4 and the whole trunk is sitting above that. If we translate down, we'll have an asymptote there at y equals negative 3, the whole trunk is above that. And so therefore we can see that our graph will cross the x-axis. If we had a, a translation up along with a reflection, then we would again get a truncus that crosses the x-axis. Um, so you want to think about that combination to work out whether or not you need to calculate x-intercepts. Okay, let's go back over to the notes and sketch some graphs ourselves. All right, so example one, we're sketching the graph of y equals negative one on two x or um, one on two x squared. So again, it's a bit tricky with the number down here. So I want to think about this as being if it's negative one on two x squared, that is the same as negative one half times 1 on x squared. So I'm going to think about my reflection and my dilation. Okay, So we've got a reflection in the x-axis, that's the negative, and we have a dilation by a factor of 1 half from the x-axis. So we've got no translations, which means that our asymptotes are at x equals 0 and y equals 0. So they're still at the axes. Um, so we can draw our x and y axes in the center, although it's a truncus, so the whole thing sits above the x-axis. So I'd probably draw it this way. Okay, it's just going to be this basically, um, and so we just need to find a point. So I might let x equal 1 when x is equal to 1, y is going to be equal to negative 1 on 2 times 1 squared. So that's just negative 1 half. Ah, sorry, I missed the fact we have a reflection, so we want our x-axis to be up here because the whole graph is going to sit below down here. Sorry, I should have thought through that shape, elephant trunk shape instead of tree trunk shape. Um, you know what I mean? You know, you've got an elephant. Elephant trunk as opposed to a tree trunk. Um, Okay, so we go through the point 1, negative 1 half. Um, the symmetry would tell us that we also go through negative 1, negative 1 half. Um, so, you know, I just want to plot. In fact, I'm just going to make those a bit further away. 
just to make it easier to draw. And this is where you make life difficult for yourself. If you try and plot that it's got to go through, you know, this um, this point here, it's going to get really hard to get your asymptote getting closer and closer to the x-axis from there. So, you know, think about the point 1, negative 1 half as being out here. And so you're going to have, it makes it much, much easier. So you can make life easier for yourself by the way you plan your graph shape. I find it really hard to draw symmetric truncuses, but we want to try and give a sense that we have symmetry. Um, so that is the point 1, negative 1 half. This is the point negative 1, negative 1 half. Um, our asymptotes are the axes, so we don't need to label them and we don't have any axis intercepts. So that's our graph. Okay, let's have a look at example two. Sketch the graph of y equals one on x minus three all squared, take away one. So we've got two things happening here, this minus three, which is the translation to the right by three, and this minus one, which is the translation down by one. So we're gonna have a translation to the right by three, which means we have an asymptote when x equals three, and we're also going to have a translation down by one, which means that we have an asymptote when y equals negative one. So we want to draw those in first. They're going to give us the structure around which to draw our shape. So x equals three and y equals negative one. No reflection, so the graph's going to sit completely above y equals negative one. I'll just make that a bit wider actually, given that my Okay, and let's have x equals 3. So no reflection, so it's going to go this way. We're therefore going to have x-intercepts and a y-intercept that we need to calculate. So let's do that. y-intercept, we're going to expect that to be somewhere between negative 1 and 0. So y equals 1 over, we let x equal 0, so that'll be negative 3 squared minus 1. So that's 1 ninth minus 1. 1 is 9 ninths. 1 ninth minus 9 ninths is minus 8 ninths. Our x-intercepts, there'll be two of them, are uh, going to be when 0 equals 1 on x minus 3 all squared take away 1. Let's add 1. So 1 equals 1 on x minus 3 all squared. Let's multiply by that denominator, so x minus 3 all squared equals 1. Taking the square root of both sides leaves us with x minus 3 on the left and plus or minus 1 on the right. And so x equals 3, adding 3, plus or minus 1, 3 minus 1 is 2 and 3 plus 1 is 4. So our asymptotes are at 2 and 4. So again you want to be consistent about your scale. So having put x equals 3 here, that's defined our scale, so making sure that we're consistent about it. Um, negative 8 ninths is pretty close to that asymptote, so I'm not going to mark it on, I'm just going to draw my shape in and get it pretty close down there. All right, and then we want the same sort of thing happening here on this side. Just going to adjust that asymptote because it's not very straight. All right, so our asymptote, our intercepts, sorry, are at 4, 0 and 2, 0. Our y-intercept is at 0, negative 8 ninths and our asymptotes are both labelled with equations. And I've labelled my axes. Okay, example three, Set, sketch the graph of y equals 10 minus two on x squared. So I'm gonna rewrite that as negative two on x squared plus 10. So we've got our reflection in the x-axis, our dilation by two from the x-axis, and our translation up 10. So we've got reflection in x-axis, which means that the shape is going to go this way, okay? We've got a dilation by a factor of 2 from the x-axis. That doesn't really change how we draw it. That will just change where the points are when we calculate them. And then we also have a translation up by 10, which means that we're going to have an asymptote when y equals 10. And our other one will be at, because we've got no vertical translation, will still be at x equals 0. So if we move this, this shape up by 10, we're going to be crossing the x-axis. y equals 10. 
There's our y-axis, there's our x-axis, our shape's going to go this way, so we're going to have two x-intercepts, but we won't have any y-intercept. So let's calculate our x-intercepts, which is to let y equal 0. Let's add 2 on x squared to both sides. Let's multiply both sides by x squared to get rid of the fraction. So 2 equals 10x squared. Let's divide by 10, so x squared equals 2 on 10, so x squared equals 1 fifth, and so therefore x equals plus or minus the square root of 1 fifth, which is plus or minus 1 on root 5, which if you rationalise you could write as plus or minus root 5 on 5. Either of these is fine, I wouldn't leave it like that because you can take the square root of 1, it's 1. Um, okay, so we just want to draw in our truncus. Again, as I said, I find it quite hard to draw these symmetric, just try and get better at it. Uh, so 1 on root 5, 0, and negative 1 on root 5, 0. That's our two x-intercepts. Our asymptote is labelled with equation. There's no y-intercept. And so we are done. Now, our final equation here, we're looking at y equals negative 1 on 2x plus 8 all squared. So again, we need to do some manipulating here because we've got this number in here which we haven't had before. We can think about it technically as a dilation from the y-axis, but it's still quite complicated um, and we haven't talked about those yet. So we want to actually manipulate it to get it into a form that we're comfortable with. Um, and to be honest, even when we learn about dilations from the y-axis, this is probably still the way I would go about doing this. So if we think about 2 is a common factor in there, so it's 2 times x plus 4 all squared. Oops, sorry, I need a second bracket there. It's all of that squared, which if we expand out that bracket on the denominator, it's 2 squared, which is 4, times x plus 4 squared, which is x plus 4 squared. So it's going to be 4 times x plus 4 all squared, which I'm going to write as negative 1 quarter times 1 on x plus 4 all squared. So we've got our reflection in the x-axis again, dilation by a quarter from the x-axis, translation to the left by 4. Okay. So we've got reflection in x-axis, dilation by 1 quarter from the x-axis. So our reflection in the x-axis tells us our shape is going this way again. Dilation by a quarter doesn't change a whole lot. Translation to the left by 4, which means we're going to have an asymptote when x equals negative 4. No up or down, so y equals 0 is still the vertical asymptote. Okay, so we've got y equals 0 and x equals negative 4, and it's a sad shape. It's not very straight, is it? Let's try that again x equals negative 4, it's going to go this way, so it's not going to cross the x-axis. We are going to cross the y-axis though, so we need to work out that point. Our y-intercept, we let x equal 0, let's go back to the original equation. So it's going to be negative 1 on 2 times 0 is 0 plus 8 all squared. So it's going to be negative 1 on 64. So a very small y-axis intercept. That's to do with both the dilation and the translation. But we've got no other y values to compare it to, so it doesn't really matter where it is. So negative, um, 0, negative 1 on 64, no x-intercept. Um, asymptotes are labelled or the axes, and we are all done. Okay, so the work today is from exercise 4b.